Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. Today we will be going over the Threat Blocker Web User Interface or Web UI. First, we need to access the Web UI. To do this, plug an Ethernet cable into the Threat Blocker Data 1 port and then into your host computer. Open a Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge web browser. All units come shipped with a default static IP address of 192.168.1.198 and a maintenance IP address of 10.0.0.1. In the address bar, enter the IP address of your unit. This will bring up the Threat Blocker Web UI page. This is the default view. On the left, we see some status and settings options, and the dashboard takes up the rest of the window. First, we'll cover the dashboard. This is where most of the important operational data is displayed. Starting with the graph on the top left, we see system state. This graph represents the cumulative penalty score for jamming and spoofing. The black line in the middle is the critical line. When jamming or spoofing scores breach this line, Threat Blocker considers the environment jammed or spoofed, and the banner at the top of the dashboard turns yellow for jamming or red for spoofing. Below this is the jamming to signal ratio graph, which shows the user how jammed the environment is. Each of the internal receivers for both L1 and L2 frequency bands are plotted. J to S values are measured in dB and range from 35 to 90. Moving to the top right of the window, we see the number of SVs used graph. This graph plots the number of satellite vehicles, or SVs, that each receiver is using. By default, GNSS2 will cold start every two minutes, which is why you see the brown line dipping to zero at two minute intervals. Below this is the carrier to noise, or C to N knot graph. This depicts the average signal strength received from tracked SVs for each internal receiver. At the bottom is the GNSS spectrum. This is a 16 MHz wide representative spectrum centered around the L1 frequency. This is not a raw RF spectrum, but one that is comprised of digitized RF data. You can't measure power with this spectrum, but you can see the type of waveform present if it is strong enough. All graphs can be viewed in a variety of time windows by clicking on the tabs under the dashboard banner. Now we will go over the GNSS status pages. These give a more detailed view of the performance of the internal receivers. At the top left, we have our GPS time, position, number of satellites used, and our average carry to noise ratio. On the right is a sky plot showing where the tracked SVs are in the sky. At the bottom is a carrier to noise bar graph showing each of our tracked PRNs and if they're used or not used. Now we'll move on to the map section. Maps utilize OpenStreetMaps to give a street-level view of the Earth. Each of the internal receivers are represented as a pin on the map. You can zoom in and out by using the plus and minus buttons, or with a scroll wheel on a mouse. Local files can be loaded to provide an additional overlay. Here's an example using a KML file. Map tiles are only loaded when your machine is connected to the internet. You can, however, download a portion of the map to your local file system. The data is stored in your web browser's cache. This feature is advantageous if you plan to use the device in a known location, such as a field test. You can download the maps prior to the test and have a street-level view available when offline. Here's an example. Click the download button, click and drag, and it will download to the cache. Next are logs. ThreatBlocker continuously stores receiver and threat data while powered on. It saves the data to a micro SD card inside of the unit. From this menu, you can clear logs, which will erase all of the data on the SD card, create new log session, which will create a new file in the log directory, and download logs, which will download the logs to your machine. ThreatBlocker logs are human-readable CSV files, which makes them ideal for post-processing captured data. Now we'll dive into settings. Settings contain multiple subsections that allow you to modify the system settings. When changing any system settings, make sure to click the Save button to save your changes. First up are receiver settings. In this menu, you can change the L1 and L2 antenna gain for GNSS1 and GNSS2. This is the antenna gain that Threat Blocker expects, and it calibrates the system. These values are calibrated for the default configuration. Some users might use a different antenna or have varying cable length from the antenna to the unit. 
matching this value to the gain of your RF path to the unit ensures accurate Jada S readings. GNSS2 has an additional feature, which is the cold start interval. This is defaulted to two minutes. This is done to make sure the receiver is more vulnerable to spoofing threats, which we wish to detect. You can also manually cold start all receivers from this menu. Next up is date and time. In this menu, you can toggle whether you want to get your date and time from the internet on or off. Threat Blocker contains a real-time clock, which holds the time whenever the unit's not powered on. If you wish to resync your time from the internet, make sure this is turned on and connect your unit to the internet. Moving on to networking, this is the menu where you can change the network settings of the device. At the top, we have our current IP address displayed. These are the default values. Under network configuration, you can choose DHCP or static IP. On static IP, you can change your IP address, network mask, gateway, and DNS server 1 and 2. Below networking is BLISS. BLISS stands for Blind Interference Signal Suppression, and it's what gives Threat Blocker its jamming suppression capability. There's three modes, always on, in which the algorithms are always running and filtering incoming signals, always off, in which the algorithms will never turn on, this mode does not provide any jamming suppression, and Jada S triggered. In this mode, Bliss will only turn on whenever the jamming threshold goes critical. Now we'll take a look at algorithms. You can toggle the broad shield jamming and spoofing algorithms on and off from this menu. When toggled off, the corresponding LEDs on the unit won't activate and the banner in the web UI won't change color. Specific to the jamming algorithms, when toggled off and Bliss is configured to Jada as triggered mode, the Bliss algorithms won't activate. You can also clear penalties from this menu. This will clear any active penalties for jamming and spoofing. Next, we'll take a look at the remote API menu. This allows external applications to receive status updates from Threat Blocker called snapshots. This is done via TCP. TCP is configured by assigning a server address and a port number to push messages to. Snapshots are output in JSON format and contain position, time, and threat detection information. At the top, you can define your snapshot period in seconds. This is how often a snapshot is output. Below this is the snapshot receiver ID. This is the receiver that the data is coming from. It defaults to 1, meaning it will output receiver data from GNSS1. If I change this to 2, the snapshots will contain receiver data from GNSS2. Now we'll move on to the About section. In the About section, you can give your unit a unique unit ID. Every threat blocker is shipped with the unit ID being the serial number of the unit. This menu also shows what version of software the unit is running and when that version was built. The last section to cover is System Update. This is how users update the software on the system. Simply click Browse, choose your update file, and click Start Update. A progress bar will pop up to show you how much is left to download and prompt you to power cycle the unit when the update is finished. This must be done manually. When performing system updates, both the L1 and L2 portions of Threat Blocker need to be updated. Once you have updated through the Data 1 port, switch your network cable over to the Data 2 port, reopen the web UI, and repeat the update process. The web UI for the L2 portion is stripped down and is meant to be used exclusively for system updates. New software builds are available for download through OwnCloud for customers who have purchased ThreatBlocker and have valid UMS. This concludes the ThreatBlocker web UI tutorial. Thank you for watching. For more information, be sure to check out our website at aroliads.com or reach us by email at support at aroliads.com.